This project started probably in the fall of 2012 um, when I created the world map in the corner over there. That's the oldest one of this piece and I didn't know what I was doing at the time but I was starting this body of work and the thing that inspired me to make that first piece was looking at maps of the Earth at night from space and you see the lights from space. And most people think of these pictures as beautiful and awe-inspiring and stuff like that. And I look at those pictures and I see evidence of how far humans have spread on the Earth. There is almost no place in the world not touched by outer light. Um, so I endeavored to make that map, focusing on the 25 most populated places in the world, and just to see what the world would look like if I just isolated those 25 places. And if you compare it to a map of lights from space, you'll, you can barely see some of those places. Um, there's a city in Africa that has a population of millions, millions and millions of people but it's less bright than Edmonton because it's not in a place not, not in a place of the world where they have the money to light their streets with, with street lights and uh, you know, the lights of the city, so to speak. Um, from there, I wanted to explore how we interact with our environment. So how can we, I started asking myself questions like how can we combat climate change and this kind of stuff and the narrative politically is very centered on emissions and CO2 emissions and carbon taxes. And I'm not totally sure that that's the right way to go. It's very focused on political power and, and, and stuff like this. And people argue over what the facts are. And that's not very productive. And I think we need to start looking for other solutions that aren't going to be centered around political debate. And it leads to, it leads to works like this one. Where I imagine just you know, can we do we have to build? We have to cut down the forests when we build a when we build a building. Um, that even happens in Winnipeg. If a new subdivision goes up, they'll wipe out all the trees right to the river. Um, so stuff like that. And I explored our connectivity to the earth with this series of flowers through um, like a connectivity theme. We're all connected to everything and I use the hexagons to sort of show that the less we understand something the more the less interconnected it's, it seems so we can see a flower as a whole and we understand it as a flower but when we start to take the flower apart our understanding of it as an individual thing sort of disintegrates and then we have no idea what it means it can, it can mean anything when you boil it down when you reduce it to its most simple uh, components. And lastly, because I, I center a lot of my work around a very simple idea of a flower or a world map or a building, I wanted to explore something more imaginative with those two pieces where I just try this very, almost an anxiety driven, manic thing to look at what a, a very abstract look at what the sky might look like in the future. And lastly, there's a piece that's missing and I wasn't able to finish it, but it's this sketch in the middle of these three here. Um, I wasn't able to finish this piece, but I wanted to sketch it and, and show it anyway, but uh, I titled it Epitaph for a reason. It would, be, it would have been the epitaph of the show. And it just shows a mega city in the future with nothing around it, that we've consumed all the resources around us and there's nothing left except for our little oasis of concrete under the baking sun. And I like to hope that people view this art, they will see it as a, they will challenge themselves to uh, think about what it means to be on this earth and what your actions, what your actions consequences are every time you Every time you do something, you're interacting with the environment, whether you realize it or not. That's it.